MTD CNC are at JJ Churchill today. This is a leading tier one aerospace component manufacturer. In the last few years alone, they've invested 10 million pounds in plant and equipment. And with a turnover currently around 22 million, by 2022, they're gonna be turning over here 60 million pounds. Now, part of that 10 million investment has gone into Matsura's machines. And I'm gonna go inside and find out how much of an impact they've had on their productivity. Uh, today, MTD CNC are at JJ Churchill. I'm here with William McLeese. Now, this is a fascinating story. Lots of facts in this. Uh, William, we're here primarily on behalf of Matsura. This is uh, pretty much a brand new man machine that you've got uh, to my left now, but it's not the first one you'd bought, is it? You've got a few machines here from them. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got four um, Matsura machines, all MAM 72Vs. Uh, within the aerospace uh, side of our business. They range from around sort of 2006 to, this is our newest version, 2018. Uh, JJ Churchill, for those that don't know, this is some company, isn't it? What, what do you manufacture? And just give us a, a flavor of how big you are as a business. Okay, so primarily we manufacture um, turbine and compressor blades. So our business is split in the aero side to, on turbines and, and compressors. Um, in terms of size, we're 160 people and uh, yeah. So what are you actually making on this Matsura then, William? Um, we're carrying out a five-axis machining operation to manufacture roots on a compressor blade. Um, that's the first operation that is carried out on this component. What's the volume of the parts going through uh, on this particular machine? We're doing approximately 300 components a week going through these, this machine. So the beauty of the MAM 7235 is you've got 32 pallets on here. So the machine is loaded up and pretty much running well, how much of the time? Well, the machine runs 24 hours, apart from one sort of shift on the weekends, but it's running pretty much round the clock. I want to I know more about this OEE that you're talking here, because this is a big part for you. Just tell us what you're achieving and what that actually means. So in terms of OEE, it's a, it's a helps us to measure the amount of productivity that we've got going through the machine. Um, we're basically seeing about 87% uptime on the machines when we consider a 24 hour period. If we were to look at the actual plan time that we've got, uh, we're close to about 100% in terms of uptime on the machine, getting conforming product through, through, the, through the Matsura. So the time that you have available, you're running pretty much at 100% of the time. That says something for these machines' reliability, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It shows that we, we have a minimal amount of breakdown time and a minimal amount of change over time and that we've got we've got consistency in our, our, our ability to deliver products. Uh, machining 100% of the time is one thing but achieving the tolerances uh, well you have to do that as well don't you does it maintain that? Absolutely so um, the tightest tolerance that we have to achieve with the, the particular product we've got on here at the moment is uh, six microns and we're, we're, we're achieving that consistently um, we've proven process capability uh, you know, to a, to a CPK of two and above. Uh, with, with, with the machine running 100% of the time as well, or the uptime that we talk about, what about the, the tools and, and the strategy on the tooling? Do you have to incorporate sister tooling here? Yeah, so in order to achieve that, that higher uh, productivity output, we do incorporate um, sister tooling. So the, the fact that we've got a large carousel on the machine allows us to make sure that we've got new sister tooling set at all times to ensure that we can do a minimum, minimum change over time. So if one tool comes to the end of its life, it's an automatic change over to the next tool before we, without any break to the, the process really. Matsura are known for being very quick machines, fast machines, reductions in cycle times. Um, often that's associated with lighter weight components. Would you say that this machine is for more than just lightweight aluminium machining? Absolutely, I mean, the, the products that we're dealing with and machining here at the moment are typically um, titanium and in canals, um, which obviously can machining those kind of components can introduce um, you know, vibration and, and the like, but this machine's standing up to that no problem, and as I said, allowing us to achieve those, those tolerances consistently. And I suppose a 15,000 RPM spindle helps with that, the Maxia spindle? Yes, that absolutely, uh, and the, the, the additional traverse speed and also the, the cycle time on the changeover for tooling as well helps to, to maintain that, so the tool change over time is you know, 1.1 seconds. Uh, what's changed since 2006 on your first machine purchase to what you have here in the MAM? Is the technology much different? Um, I think the, the technology in term, not so much the technology, but the, the, the amount of space that's in, involved in the machine and the footprint that's, that it takes up. 
So the new machine that we've got here has greater access, which really helps in terms of loading the machine and, and the engineering improve outs, greater access to the machine, and also the, the amount of reach that we've got on the B-axis um, gives us more maneuverability, uh, allows us to machine larger components and effectively reduce the number of operations that are required. So the B-axis, that's the, the table uh, tipping, is it? Yeah, so the B-axis has got a greater range on it than some of the, uh, the predecessor machines, which allows us to, to get in and, and access more of the component. And the fact that the uh, working envelope of the machine is larger as well means that we can get tools further in at, at various parts of the component, which means that we can remove operations. Uh, you say you're running for pretty much 100% of the available time. If you do have a, an issue with these machines, uh, well, firstly, how frequent is that? And, and how do you find the support? Because if you're trying to operate at that maximum uptime, you need someone that's going to be able to fix the machine if it goes wrong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and we bought this new machine because we do have slight older machines that are, you know, they've got wear and tear in them. We don't really see much uh, breakdown or downtime within them, but where we do have an issue that's associated to the age of the machine, we get good response from Matsura. Um, you know, they're relatively local to us and we know we can get critical spares. You know, they're 40 minutes away, so if there is something that requires a spare, we can, we can get that onto our machine and get, get, get back up and running probably within a 24-hour period. We all know this is a Japanese machine and with that comes um, precision, reliability and longevity. Often there's a price tag uh, associated with that too. Would you say these machines are expensive? It depends how you look at it. I mean, realistically, in terms of the, 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 the tolerances that we need to achieve and the reliability and the accuracy of the machine, it's, 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 it's worth it. You know, it's not expensive for what you're actually um, getting as, as a result of that. Because there is a ter terminology used, cost of ownership. Is that something you consider here at JJ Churchill? Yeah, the total cost of ownership is, is something that we consider, especially when selecting this machine and, you know, the amount of uh, maintenance that's gone into previous uh, machines that we've got and the cost that's associated was definitely considered when, when selecting the machine and, and the, the cost of ownership is good for these. And CPK, what does that actually mean here at JJ Churchill and to you? So when we've got a new product and we introduce it into the manufacturing process, we need to demonstrate to the customer that we have a capable process. CPK is a measurement of how, how, how capable that process is and we measure all of our features to a CPK value. So it's, it's part of the um, demonstration process that you may go through when carrying out a PPAP or a fair to demonstrate to your customer that you've got a stable process and it's consistent. So what's a poor figure? Well generally industry standards anything over 1.33 is considered um, a good a good figure and we're achieving in excess of two, two as a CPK value for, for the majority of features. So doing pretty well it's fair to say. Uh, lastly from me here William, um, some people would consider these machines for, for batch production um, uh, you know, volume components. Now, I know you are doing a, a lot of the same parts here, but can you see how flexible these machines are? And the fact that even if you were only doing 10 offs, 5 offs, 20 offs, these machines would still be able to make you more productive. Absolutely. So, we, although this machine is allocated to doing a sort of main, main production part, which we, we classify as mass production for us. Um, we do use the machines for uh, demonstrator parts, um, prototypes, and also small batch um, engine development batches as well, what we call fast make. Uh, marks out of 10 for this, from your opinion? Well, I've got to say a 10 really, haven't I?